Uh, hello and a very warm welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the International Day of Monuments and Sites. This year under the theme Heritage and Climate, through a discourse on climate change, corals and coastal heritage, I request everyone to please keep your mics off and post your questions in the chat box below. The event is organized by iCommerce India in association with the documentary filmmakers Coral Women. I would like to start the event by introducing Ms. Shalini Das Gupta. She is a conservation architect based in New Delhi and runs a multidisciplinary practice offering services in architecture, interior design, and conservation. She's currently the secretary of iCommerce India and the national focal point for the Climate Change and Heritage Working Group. Welcome, ma'am, and over to you. Thank you, Nirjari. Good morning, all. And welcome, thank you for joining for this, um, joining us today to celebrate the World Heritage Day. Uh, I will um, start by taking two minutes to introduce our host for today's uh, event, which is Nirzari M. Bindu. Nirzari is a conservation architect and an alumni of SPA Delhi, currently working out of Dubai. Bindu is a conservation architect, researcher, academician from SPA Vijayawada, and she's based out of Hyderabad. Today's event is organized on behalf of ICOMOS India by uh, Climate Change and Heritage Working Group and National Scientific Committee of uh, Risk Preparedness. Both the groups have uh, very common issues and causes to work towards, and we have a lot of common members between the two uh, NSCs and the working group. Uh, we have our NSC uh, Risk Preparedness Co-Coordinator, uh, Mr. Shehjad Ahmed, who will be joining us as a panelist uh, from Uttarakhand. Before I hand over to my colleague, Umaji, you are such an inspiration. Such an inspiration. You learned swimming at the age of 49, then you did scuba diving, then you learned scuba diving just to know your subject well. You know, the film has, you know, it, it is an eye opener for me. It has been the movie, the message, the last message with the movie gives is so perfect. But knowing is the key to caring. In Hindi, you know, we have a saying which says, Jab jago tabhi savera. For, for us here in Aikumas, I think this applies very well because, you know, we have woken up two years late. I believe the movie was made two years ago and we are watching the movie today after two years. So for all of us at Aikumas, it's the Savera now. But I hope that, you know, this movie will inspire all of us here at Aikumas and we will take this forward and we will collaborate to, you know, actually create this the, the main theme of the movie, you know, knowing is the key to caring and so that we are able to create that awareness, which is so much more needed. Both of issues which have come out from the So without any delay, I shall now introduce my, uh, you know, I, my colleague and anchor, Poonam Verma. Um, she is an architect, building conservationist, researcher, writer, activist, and many more. You know, she's based out of Goa with decades of domestic and international experience. Over to you, Poonam. Thank you, Shalini. Welcome all. We have all seen the Coral Woman. Let us now meet the eyes, the hearts, the minds behind the movie. Priya Thuversari is an independent documentary filmmaker and television producer from Kerala and now based in New Delhi. Priya has been directing, producing, editing documentary films and television programs for over a decade now and is currently director at Chambal Media. We hope Priya will join us shortly and uh, give her keen comments. She has taken ill, we got to know, late last night. Let's, uh, it's it's a, such a privilege to have Uma Maniji with us who's trained scuba diver, as we just heard, as is interested in the underwater world, as well as threat to coral reefs in the Gulf of Manar in Southern India. Welcome, Umaji. We are all very inspired by your journey as captured in the movie. Thank you for your heart and hard work. And I believe you were in Goa for the installation 
of the sculpture recently. What was the experience like? Will you please share with us? Umaji? Thank you. So I thank uh, Priya Tulsiri and uh, Anupam Anilai for this uh, Goa installation. And I was so thrilled when I dived underwater to see this fish and uh, the cement structure they have made. And uh, I don't know, my joy knew no bounds. I was in cloud nine, uh, but it's an oxymoron underwater. <laughs> so I really enjoy that uh, dive. And uh, it was a very kind of a nirvana moment for me to see uh, that installation underwater. So that is about the Goa dive and the installation. Right. Thank you, Maji. We'll come back to you. Let me now introduce Al Anupama Mantloy. She is a veteran television professional with an overall perspective on content creation and business. She is Harvard Business School alumni, and her first tryst with content as features director began with Plus Channel in 1993. She currently works as an independent script consultant for Z5. Anupama made her debut as an independent producer under Habana, A Boy and a Dog Productions with her award-winning documentary, Anti Sudha, Anti Radha. She's the co-founder and impact producer of the Coral Woman Impact Project, which highlights the need for mar marine life conservation. Invite you, Anupama, we are so eagerly waiting to hear from you. Over to you. Thank you, Poonam. First of all, I want to thank you for putting this together. We met in Goa and, uh, you know, we never expected that an event would come out of it like this. So thank you very, very much. And thank you to iCommerce India as well for putting this together. Uh, it's great to have like-minded people who are concerned about uh, the environment to sort of come together on this platform and see what we can do. And thank you for acknowledging and accepting our film uh, and embracing this project so nicely. Um, I have a presentation. Uh, should I get started with that? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, from my understanding, I think all of you have seen the film. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to take it a step forward from there, that having seen the film, you would... Re One second, what is this? Uh, so I just want to take you back a little bit to how the film actually came about. <clears throat> and this is so unfortunately, Priya cannot be with us today because she has COVID and uh, is really not keeping too well. So, you know, it's Uma and uh, me who are going to sort of hold the flag today. Um, so on her behalf, I just wanted to take you through a little bit about the birth of the film. In 2016, Priya decided to make this film when she fell in love with painter Uma Mani's inspiring story. As she began filming Uma, the film took on a deeper significance. She realized that this film would be not just about Uma, but also about corals and an attempt to save them. And I think that is what you must have seen when you saw the film, that from, from Uma's life and her journey from painting corals to becoming a scuba diver, uh, it also then slowly embraced more and more about uh, the perils of what the marine life is going through and the kind of uh, pressures it is subjected to. Uh, once the film was released, it's traveled to multiple festivals. It was completed in 2019 and it has been screened at more than 60 national and international film festivals. And it has also been screened for around 200, uh, 2000 youngsters. So during one of those screenings, a young 12 year old girl asked if she could do something to reverse coral bleaching. And the same question was asked repeatedly at different screenings. And that has actually been the primary motivation for us to build awareness with the film. And that's how Priya and I, we sort of met during Good Pitch in 2020, uh, when this film was presented and a lot of partners and collaborators came and joined us. And the reason behind this was because while screening the film, while the adults would really say, wow, I didn't know this. I didn't know that there were coral reefs that existed uh, along the coastline of India. The 
the youngsters would actually get really agitated and, and wanted to know what they could do now to save the corals. And we realized that this awareness was important because the minute people understand that there is this situation that exists around us, they want to do something about it. And that is why our target audience is really uh, the youngsters of today, who in any case, as we know, are around 50% of India's population uh, at this point in time. So, uh, and these two paintings that you see here have been made by children. So uh, that was the other thing, that there has been a lot of uh, excitement and engagement by the youngsters uh, around this film. And so we started the project. Now this project, the goals are basically very simple, is to build awareness for marine conservation and climate change. It's to help coastal communities adopt environmentally friendly practices. And it is also to create youth ambassadors who will build a legacy for environment prote protection. Now, as I mentioned that uh, during Good Pitch, we came across a lot of collaborators and partners, and there were some of them who sort of stood by us through these two years when COVID was affecting people's businesses and their work lifestyle and all of that. Uh, these are the people who really stuck with us and it's important to mention them. So when we started the uh, Coral Roman Impact Project, the first thing was for us to create a website uh, because it was important to put some information about not only the film, make it available on the website, uh, also to sort of build a community around uh, marine conservation on the website itself. So this uh, website was created by One Gen and Ridev, and uh, it currently hosts all the webinars that we did, uh, which were also sort of we partnered with uh, again One Gen and Alliance France. And it also hosts all of Uma's paintings, which uh, the whole understanding was that anybody who comes on that website to buy a painting by Uma, 50% uh, of the proceeds would come to the Coral Woman Impact Project and 50% would go to Uma. And that kind of helps us in uh, all of the initiatives that we've started. We've also been very fortunate in having released an illustrated children's book created by Avid Learning. Uh, it's been written by Lubena Bandukwala and it's been illustrated by Sanket Petkar and published by HarperCollins. So this image that you see here is basically the, the cover of the book. Uh, we were also very lucky that um, the CSMVS uh, Museum in Bombay uh, sort of also created a terracotta piece, which they exhibit in their museum now. It is the cover of the book. It has the, um, uh, how should I put it, the code, which you can sort of scan and watch the film. So it takes you to a link that where you can watch the film. Uh, and the other thing that we wanted and we've been very keen to do was the art residency, which has been partially funded by the Inlag Stakeoff Grant, Party Color, Hyundai Art for Oho Grant, as well as Awesome by the Water Grant. And the whole initiative has been sort of we partnered with Soto House and Coastal Impact. Now, this art residency was something that, so this has been Priya's vision from the time we made the pitch at Good Pitch, was to sort of use art to create some kind of a connection with people and to create discussions and conversations around marine conservation. And so, we had this art residency in Goa in March. Uh, the entire team was present there. We took up an Airbnb and we had Soto House, which provided their space. So what, what you're seeing here is the sculpture. It's been made in, uh, in cement. And uh, sort of the whole art residency played out there. So initially the artists worked on paper, they worked with clay models, they worked with uh, plasticine and then they sort of, that whole thing came alive uh, in cement. Now the concept of the art residency was basically that there would be two sculptures. One would be an underwater sculpture. The underwater sculpture would uh, basically be placed at the bed of the ocean and would have, and we would transplant corals on them. So it would be sort of a means for coral transplantation and rehabilitation, uh, which is something that Coastal Impact is helping us with. Uh, who they are already sort of doing a lot of work in coral rehabilitation off the coast of Goa. And so we partnered with them. Um, 
So one is so that that was the whole idea for the uh, underwater sculpture was that it would be a home for the fish and it would sort of over a period of time become this coral reef uh, in along the coastline of uh, Goa. Uh, the other uh, sculpture, the same design would become a land sculpture. The whole thing was for it to be an interactive sculpture. Uh, it would be made of plastic and waste, and it would be exhibited at uh, art museums and festivals and exhibitions. And the plan for this is basically uh, to take place sometime in October, September, uh, October, November, once the uh, monsoons are done with in Goa. Now the whole documentation of the underwater installation is something that we have done, and we will continue to do so, so that the videos that we create from this uh, entire documentation will play on the underwater uh, installation. Uh, so will play on the land installation. And the whole idea for it is that when people come and see the land uh, sculpture, not only will they see and be reminded of the waste that we contribute as humans uh, to, to marine life and to the environment around us, it will also tell us through the video documentation of the way nature nurtures and heals what we damage. So that's like the larger concept uh, of this art residency. Now we've called it the silent scream because um, it's, it's this fish, which I think everyone relates to. It's easy to understand for uh, youngsters to the common person. So it's not, we've tried not to make it too, um, too sort of, too unique that people wouldn't understand the design. It's very simple. It's a, it's a fish that is in pain, it's screaming, and it's, it's looking for us for some understanding or for someone to heal the situation. It's also reflective of the apathy, our apathy, where we don't hear the scream, we are unable to hear the scream, or we choose not to hear the scream. Uh, the other uh, sort of component of the sculpture is really the, the body of the sculpture is, is an oil barrel or it's sim symbolic of an oil barrel with the industrial effluents that flow into the ocean. So, uh, and that damage that it creates is what is causing, is, is part of the reason for the, uh, for the pain that we are subjecting the marine life to. We are hoping that the design underwater will eventually evolve into a colorful coral reef and a home for marine life, uh, while on land, it will be symbolic of uh, human destruction. These are our artists who sort of put the sculpture together. Uh, Midun Mohan, he's an animator. He's also sort of worked on some of the animations that you see uh, in, the, in the film itself. He lives and works from Goa. And uh, he uh, sort of, he's into sculpture and new media installations. He also collaborates with theater, cinema, and games. Uh, Ram Kumar is, uh, again, the other uh, artist. He's an Indian contemporary artist and sculptor from Tamil Nadu. He received the prestigious Lalit Kala Academy scholarship in 2014 and a national award from Lalit Kala Academy, Minister, uh, Ministry of Culture, India in 2015. He also received a junior fellowship from the Ministry of Culture, India, and an all gold medal award by Praful Dhaunakar Art Foundation. Now the thing is, he's he's worked in stone, and he uh, so he worked with Midun uh, on sort of creating this entire sculpture, which is incidentally it weighs around five hundred to six hundred kgs, and it's in five blocks, so that it it was easier for us to transport and place at the bottom of the ocean. Um, I'm not being able to go to the next slide for some reason. Yeah. Um, the next artist is Pooja Gupta. She's basically a multimedia artist with a focus on science communication from Hyderabad, India, with a specialist interest in ecology and wildlife conservation. She also uses her skills in design thinking to develop multimedia content for science education. And uh, so she was uh, part of the team that sort of came up with the entire idea for the sculpture. This is our team. After the sculpture was made, we said, you know, ek photo the banti hai. So uh, this is us in Soto House at the workshop. 
Uh, a little bit about sculpture one, uh, which is the underwater sculpture. It was installed on the 29th of March in the waters of Grand Island in Goa. Uh, Umamani, as you all met, was present there for it. And uh, she, I think it was just so wonderful for us to have her there because it kind of completed the entire circle from the film to the uh, installation underwater. Then we have the coastal impact uh, planted corals on the sculpture and will continue to oversee the growth of the corals as well as the regular cleaning of the sculpture so that you know there is excess algae accumulation that takes place over time so that cleaning becomes essential so right now coastal impact is doing all of this for us at a very very minimal fee uh, and we are hoping that you know, as we go forward and we are able to fundraise, more and people, more and more people join hands with us and make it easy for everyone to sort of do their bit and to make sure that the sculpture underwater, it thrives as a coral reef over a period of time. The video doc documentation, as I told you, has already started and is something that we plan to do every six months to see how the corals are growing on the sculpture. In fact, actually, I must tell you that when we placed the sculpture the next day when we went there again, some of the fish were already sort of very curiously exploring that, you know, what is this new piece? And we're really, really hoping that it becomes a home for them. Our sculpture two, which is the land installation, uh, is sort of something that we're going to do post monsoon in October, November. Uh, again, it'll be created by the same artists. It will be interactive and will allow visitors to sort of come and add a piece of plastic or waste that would have normally found its way into the oceans. It will be housed in a gallery or museum in Goa as a reminder of our actions. The land sculpture will have a QR code that, that will take people to the film or to the uh, virtual reality videos or the videos that we are currently documenting of the underwater installation for a more immersive experience. This uh, exhibit will travel across India or it will serve as a prototype for creating more installations across India and other partnering countries. So that's really the, the plan. The larger vision for this art residency is to build an environment-based art festival where the Coral Woman film is screened, followed by discussions. The sculpture is exhibited along with videos of the underwater uh, installation. Artists will also screen their work around the environment. The children's illustrated book will be available for purchase and events like drawing, painting, theater, uh, which will be built around the book for children. There will be a musical performance that will be created uh, around Bindu Malini's work and other artists. Uh, Bindu Malini was the composer for the music uh, of the documentary. There will be similar residencies that we can be planned, uh, that we can plan across different cities along India's coastline, as well as international collaborations, creating culturally relevant designs with additional artists. So, you know, the whole idea really is to create an ecosystem or an eco, eco festival using art and using all the sort of collaterals that we've already created around the film to create a lot more engagement and conversations about marine conservation and the environment at large. Uh, these are already some of the activities that we've held. So there have been a lot of screenings that we've held across India for children, for adults, for the communities. Uh, this is the book, the cover that you can see there, which is, you know, it allows for children to paint in it. These are some of the things the children have mentioned, like, I like this film very much, and it gave me much knowledge on corals. Now I know how corals are being destroyed, and I hope that we can save them at all costs. You know, so they're really, really passionate about wanting to do something. And that is something that we feel we must kind of harness and do something about. Uh, we have multiple collaboration opportunities. So, you know, it could be like adopting a piece or actually even adopting the entire underwater sculpture and becoming a blue ambassador for marine restoration. It could be about funding the land sculpture and presenting this artistic endeavor across the country. So this sculpture can be complemented by call women screenings, discussions and social activism and can be something that we sort of exhibit at various parts in India, create a larger conversation where we eventually, uh, we were hoping that, you know, the policy makers could also be included in it so that we can, we can create restricted areas. We can, I mean, there's a lot that one can do. 
And I, I really, really hope that in this conversation, uh, all of you will sort of start thinking about it and, and maybe share what are the various things that we can do to help the uh, marine conservation, you know, the various avenues that we can take. For us, really, as the Coral Woman Impact Project, we have a couple of success metrics, and um, they are they are sort of how should I say measurable. It's like the successful implementation of the model across coastlines in India. So how many times we can replicate the model? Tracking the use of the QR code to see how many people have scanned to scanned to watch the videos and the film. How many people have we reached overall? in terms of the attendees for the festivals, people who have interacted, uh, people who've sort of written in, people who've engaged with the, with the art exhibit, documenting the growth of the corals on the sculpture and the increase in marine life, as well as the number of exhibitions and festivals with coast, coastal community outreach. So that's really the, the larger vision for us. And that's it for, for the Coral Woman project. Fantastic. Congratulations. And more we are in, you know, so this is really um, not just hearts, minds and uh, eyes, it's, it's actually action as well and gathering force with you. So, and we are here now without any further delay, let's hear from our panelists as well, who I'm sure are very, very excited and, and also um, inclined to, as you said, to share their ideas. How do we go forward? So I, without further delay, my first uh, go-to person is Rohit Jigyasu. Um, Rohit, yes. can we see you? Yes. Rohit Jigyasu is a conservation architect and risk management professional from India, currently working at ICROM as project manager on urban heritage, climate change, and disaster risk management. Over to you, Rohit. Thank you very much, Poonam, for, uh, for this introduction. Uh, so first of all, congratulations to all those involved in this documentary, which is very inspiring. I really, really enjoyed watching it. And right from the beginning till the end, every every screen has something to tell us you know so it is something that we can't just skip you have to watch each and every uh, frame to get the best out of this movie so thank you very much to all of you for this inspiration a uh, couple of things that i take away from this uh, which i think we can apply for uh, cultural heritage specifically with regards to the impact of climate change first thing that i would uh, really carry uh, as a message is that <clears throat> this movie actually shows such a great uh, intimate link between culture and nature uh, that we cannot look at either of them uh, without the other. So uh, I remember in the movie you have the corals in the in the in the houses and how they have used them. It's part of the architecture, and at the same time uh, it is part of nature because these corals come from nature. So this intimate connection has to be sustained for the future. And we know that this uh, is the greater stake that we have at the moment. How can we ensure that while we keep the natural uh, aspects, our culture can also survive because neither can survive without the other. So that is one of the main important thing that I uh, carried as a message. The other thing is that this movie actually showed me that climate change cannot be addressed in isolation. It is connected to how we do development. It is connected to uh, the way we handle, uh, you know, all kinds of diseases that are there that are affecting people. It is connected to, um, of course, built form or the architecture, as I mentioned. Uh, it is uh, so, and it is con connected to conflict, which we also came to know through this movie. So what is important for us is not to look at climate change in isolation and rather embed it in the way we do the overall development process. And heritage has to be also seen in that perspective, not as standalone thing, but as something that has to be part and parcel of how we address uh, overall development that, that takes into account uh, climate uh, change related impacts. Now, the third thing that I carried with me is, uh, I remember in the movie, um, there is a very clear mention that 
what can we do at the local level if the global challenges are not addressed? So there is this kind of a link between global and local. Uh, at local level, we cannot do things at the uh, without global support, but it is true also the other way around. Uh, sometimes changes have to happen at the local level, and then these have to be uh, multiplied, these have to be scaled up to make uh, real impact on the ground. So uh, I think that's also something that we have to uh, be really thinking about. The, the last important point, which I think uh, we are also doing here, uh, we are trying to now move forward uh, at ECRAM uh, is to look at disaster risk management and climate action uh, through nature-based solutions, uh, which we call NBS. Now, uh, the nature-based solutions can help to protect us from climate change impacts uh, while slowing further warming, supporting biodiversity and securing ecosystem services and therefore contributing towards the protection of uh, natural as well as cultural heritage properties. Uh, and that is something we have not thought before so much, but to bring in this nature-based solution concept, which was actually uh, defined by IUCN very clearly in 2016. Uh, and I would just give this definition because I think it's important for us to really uh, be uh, aware of that. Uh, it is defined as the actions to protect, uh, sustainably manage and restore natural or modified ecosystems that address societal challenges effectively and adaptively, simultaneously providing human well-being and bio biodiversity benefits. I think this, this definition is very important for us. And while we work towards really addressing climate uh, impacts on our heritage, we should really keep this in mind. Um, and I would also like to say that uh, um, it is also important that uh, you know, we operationalize the ecosystem approach um, where we are not looking at humans and environment as uh, separated, but always look at the interrelationships between the two. How can we sustain these interrelationships and these interrelationships between humans and the environment also of course include uh, other uh, you know, flora and fauna. Uh, I remember very nicely in this movie when you talk about corals without fish and how you have started to include fish in your painting, Umaji, was very, very inspiring. Why you, you kind of, through that image, made us think that corals cannot be looked at without uh, you know, the, the fishes. And you were also saying like they are like, they're, they hide behind them. They are like their houses, their shelter. So we have to see that kind of intimate connection uh, between the two, which was really brought out uh, very, uh, clearly in your uh, thinking, in your, in your movie. So I just want to conclude by saying that uh, we should think about five main categories in my view. Uh, one is of course about ecosystem protection. Uh, the other is that we should identify specific issues uh, because this movie also talks about many interconnected issues. So I think we need to really see what those issues are and we should try to address those issues. You know, uh, So we, we have to be issue specific. Uh, the third important thing which I carry through this movie is the importance of infrastructure, relationship with infrastructure. What kind of relationship do we establish with our infrastructure is the key to sustainability. If the infrastructure is all leading to sewage in the sea, uh, what are we ending up with? So that's also an important element that we have to think about. The fourth thing is about ecosystem-based management. Uh, we cannot think about management without having this ecosystem thinking, which I suppose we haven't done to, to, to the extent that we should do so far. And uh, lastly, I would mention the importance, which again, this movie brings out is about ecosystem restoration. Because as you said also, that uh, there, is, there are a lot of questions, how can we bring it back? So I think it is also in time for us to think about ecosystem restoration uh, in this whole process. So that's all I would like to say, but thank you again for for this very inspiring movie and made me lot to think a lot about what we should do and how we should do, go about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rohit, very well said. Um, not more reaction because I would like to first go to the next panelist, Ananya Bhattacharya, joining us from Calcutta. And she is the co-founder and director of banglanatak.com a social enterprise headquartered at Kolkata and working across India for fostering inclusive and sustainable development using culture-based approaches. Over to you, Ananya. Thank you, Poonam. 
Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the CCH Working Group and NSCRP to bring this wonderful film to us. As Shalini said, we had not seen the film, which was made a couple of years back. But it is a wonderful example of what we talk about is that, you know, for climate change communication, art plays such a vital role. You know, Umaji, uh, we are really thankful to you for painting these wonderful corals. And then we are thankful to Priya and Anupama to take her ideas and inspire all of us through the film. And your fascinating example of the art installation and that you are continuing. Indeed, you know, I was very uh, impressed when you said that the children said what we can do now. You know, that is the role of art. Art does not exist in vacuum, right? People do art because others relate to it. So your work and your film inspired the children to act now, which is what we all need to do if we need to save our world from climate change. Otherwise, we'll lose more of, more, most of our coastal areas and many of our cities. Even Kolkata is at a risk of drowning in, after 30 years. I'm from Kolkata. So, you know, we all need to act now. And to make people act, I think we need to do this connection, the connection of technology, of art, and of science. You are talking of science communication using multimedia, or talking how QR code is taking the world to the films. I think these are wonderful examples. And at ICOMOS, we look forward to collaborate with more such organizations to bring such examples to the world and also do ourselves. Now, uh, another important thing of the Gulf of Manar is, you know, it is recognized by UNESCO, you know, as one of the rich uh, resource of marine biodiversity. But how many people in India are aware of these recognitions and the implications? So this is a huge area of work which your film brings to light. You know, what touched me most in the film, the story where the person says, you know, previously we used to go down and we used to take a sack and collect pearls from oysters. And indeed, this region was famous for pearls and those are no longer there. This shows a close link between natural heritage and cultural heritage. And I'm sure if we do research, we'll find folklore, we'll find songs which connect corals and pearls. And these are all getting lost and the islands are sinking. I was doing a bit, a bit of reading up, you know, after seeing the film. And I saw the wonderful example of one island, which was supposed to sink by 2022. But because action was taken and because these artificial reefs are created, there has been a 54% uh, regeneration of land, which is wonderful. And your example at Goa, where you're creating art installation, you know, to regenerate the marine drive. I mean, these are such wonderful examples. And as ICOMOS, uh, it's our duty to take these stories out to the world. And it has been fascinating. So thank you for all these initiatives. Now, Rohit uh, spoke of nature-based uh, solutions. I'd like to highlight another thing. You know, in our way of doing things, we operate in silos. And we have the Institute of Oceanography. We have the Institutes of Marine Biodiversity. And I'm sure they do not th think of art. And what we need to push for is the people-centered approach. Unless our research connects with people, which um, Umaji in her simple way did, right? She connected the people to the concern for science. I think all of us, we need to take forward this advocacy to connect these institutions and maybe build a network where we talk how we can engage the people, local communities. Rohit spoke of, you know, that local and global are not separate. We use the word glocal all the time, indeed. So these are some of the action points we really need to take forward, using art for communication, engaging children, using technology, integrating art, science, technology, and bringing all the stakeholders together, under taking a, what we call a 360-degree approach. You know, science, art are not silos. They're all very connected. And this is what your film has shown us. Thank you. In fact, I have a question for you later, if you can respond that whether you found anything, any examples of how the marine biodiversity is there in the people's folklore or songs or rituals. Yeah. Thank you. Noted, Ananya. We'll come back to that. Uh, please, um, Anupama, just make a note for that query too. Moving to the next. Um, 
I invite Surya Narayan Murthy. I hope he's here. He is a practicing conservation architect and is currently professor of architecture in JBR College of Architecture, Hyderabad, and joining us from there. In July 2021, Kakatiya Rudraeshwara Temple, Palampet, Telangana, India got the recognition of UNESCO World Heritage Site status under his leadership. Over to you. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Puna. This was uh, really a wonderful uh, uh, artwork and uh, movie that uh, we have seen. Art uh, uh, plays a significant role in uh, human communication, living, and sharing of our resources in this world. Um, when I was looking at it, uh, I came across uh, uh, recently uh, one of the Godavari mangroves, um, which is a creation of uh, in the uh, close to Bay of Bengal, Godavari mangroves, and there is also Krishna mangroves. The formation of deltaic uh, uh, landform and waters, estuaries, uh, you would find uh, very closely to these uh, areas. Um, there, uh, there is a lot of uh, infrastructure being created uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, um, visitor, visitor infrastructure, people uh, other than the people who uh, live in this area, uh, people who come to see these places. Because many of these places, when they are visited, uh, they are exploited uh, um, to a very uh, different and uh, uh, um, different extent. So when they are used, when they are um, interacted in these locations, uh, sometimes uh, they are uh, overused and uh, even the infrastructure that is created uh, in these locations, they are not uh, sensitive to uh, the very meaning of that, those locations. So in these uh, areas, uh, you have demonstrated how art can play a very significant role in communication and in integration uh, with people, all the stakeholders to understand how they are using and how they are interacting, how they are sharing their resources. And especially uh, the uh, coral uh, and uh, uh, sea aquatic life uh, uh, resources, uh, how it is being uh, used and uh, utilized uh, um, some misused, overused, uh, and uh, what are the uh, precautions and uh, what is the direction in which all of us need to think? I think uh, this is, uh, um, the movie uh, gives us uh, uh, the process involved in communicating uh, the role of art and integrating uh, science technology as uh, put forth by uh, Rohit and also Ananya previously. I uh, wish uh, we take up uh, uh, many such more uh, activities uh, across uh, uh, coastal areas, not limited to uh, uh, Goa alone, but uh, uh, all other places and especially where uh, I came across recently, uh, these uh, mangrove forests um, in uh, Bay of Bengal area. Thank you very much. Thank you for those thoughts. Now I invite Amrita Balal, who is an architect, urban ecological planner, and founding partner at Space Matters, an award-winning multidisciplinary design studio. She has been a finalist for the Rolex Arts Foundation's Mentor Protege Initiative and was named in the annual international shortlist of emerging women architects by Architectural Journal UK. Over to you, Amrita. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for Ikum, uh, to Ikumos for putting this together. It's uh, I think I've already learned so much in the course of just being part of the panel. And uh, I think that comes from the fact that uh, this whole 
uh, initiative by Uma, supported by Priya and Anupama, is sort of embedded in um, engendering conversations. Uh, and I think that's so important in the context of climate change, especially uh, because the issues seem so out of scale uh, and so daunting. Uh, and I think one of the big takeaways that I um, uh, that I personally took from the film is how an individual's own journey, especially when it fosters community and the sort of incredible community of women uh, going on to this sort of community that connects to heritage ex uh, uh, professionals here, but also artists, fisher folk, uh, local communities. Uh, I, I think that's, that's uh, uh, moving, uh, but also uh, so educative because I think uh, a lot of discussions around problems of our time uh, focus on information as, uh, as providing solutions. But I think uh, what really helps is to have more and more conversations around, uh, around these themes. Uh, so thank you very much for not just uh, what you've done around corals, but also uh, in terms of providing us a template uh, as a community of heritage professionals of how to sort of very holistically uh, look at uh, these uh, issues uh, and, and how much a personal narrative, what power in this sort of really large scale issues, a personal narrative can have so much power to touch uh, um, so many aspects of the issue. Um, I'm also uh, representing the NSU on industrial heritage and it was very revealing to me uh, how much, uh, you know, whether you talk about fisheries or uh, 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 the trade in pearls, et cetera, how much uh, nature, culture, and sort of industry go together because, uh, and there's such a flip side to it where you're also seeing uh, current industrial practices uh, which are leading to uh, just destruction of the biosphere. Whereas people in their lifetime, you know, like maybe just 30 years back, remember seeing the coral reefs in a way that they have probably been for centuries. So I think there is something to learn in this sort of like, like a critical appraisal of industrial practices because we always look at industry as like a post-industrial revolution narrative, um, ignoring that there have been, I mean, an industry at its core is about aspirations and livelihoods and probably the human need to progress in however way we construct it. And these industries like fishery, et cetera, have been going on for centuries in a manner that the cultural practices also sustained the natural ecosystem. And I think, again, in terms of both documentation, but also what I've learned from the film in terms of mainstreaming these narratives, um, we, we don't know enough. We don't know enough of what, what uh, all these industrial practices, um, even like 60 years back, meant for the communities, how they coexisted with the natural ecosystem. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I take back a lot uh, in, uh, into how even from the industrial heritage perspective, uh, local cultural industrial practices have so much to do with uh, sustainable um, um, ways of livelihood generation for uh, uh, in the in the light of climate change. And um, yeah, I think uh, I, I I think I'd like to end with that. Uh, but thank you very much for uh, for all that you're doing. Um, and I think for me, the big takeaway is how this sort of provides a, a template. Uh, the aspect of corals is crucial in itself. But I think one one can apply this to so many other issues. Where uh, um, I think Shalini said, "Ki jab jago tabhi savera." Uh, you know, people who are invested in it know what's going on. But for us, the challenge is always to mainstream this conversation, create a community uh, of concerned, caring individuals around it, uh, very strategically, but also at the end, driven from the heart as Umaji's own personal journey has revealed to us. So thank you very much to everyone involved. Thanks. Well said. Now I invite Poonam Sambaria who's joining us from Ahmedabad. She started her firm practicing conservation 
with partner Ashish Chambaria in 2006 and has been working as a consultant to various government and private and national and international organizations since then. She has also been involved with academics in architecture since 2008. And as West Zone coordinator, she is also the executive member of Ecomoss India. Poonam? Yeah. Thank you, Poonam. <laughs> uh, I think already a lot has been said, but there are two major takeaways that I am looking at this. One is there is no age for looking at things correctly. I mean, that is the first thing because I'm also in a similar age right now. And uh, when we are running around to do this thing and that thing, and we actually forget what is the right thing to do at the right time. So, I mean, to go and look at this age and to understand the whole issue from its basis and to actually, and then spread awareness is one thing uh, which is a major takeaway. The other thing which also inspires me is taking to the children because they are the one, not, not only the youth, but the kids, because they are the ones who actually take things forward. They question things. Our minds get blocked through so many things and we have stopped questioning that whether something which we do, which is right or wrong, take it to the kids, the people who actually question, because very rightly said that uh, when, when uh, in Gujarat also, because Gujarat has one of the biggest coastlines, almost 22% of the whole thing, and not only corals, but mangroves and a lot of other things. And uh, yes, coral mining has stopped and uh, there are people who are visiting corals, but when, when tourists go and they visit corals, they see the beauty of it. They do not understand the issues which are related to this. And they say this is beautiful, like very likely what Surya said that, okay, they are beautiful, but the kids actually question. It, what are they? Why are they? Where do they come from? What do they do? And so that is one of the major things. Also, as a conservation professional, when we see it in architecture, you know, we, when we see historical architecture, or we see traditional architecture, we see it that architecture was always designed in response to what was there. With the coming of various technologies, we have ways and means to do it. But what we see is that, okay, this is the issue. And the technology can help us construct in this way. We forget that what happens to the ecology when we don't balance it with the architecture or the intervention that we are providing. We say, okay, they, we need to intervene in this way and how can the technology solve our problem of construction? Forgetting that what the issue is going to be is not the construction, but the ecology which is getting spoiled. And the way, uh, Umaji, you have created this uh, video, which is, I mean, it is giving technical understanding. At the same time, it can reach to the normalist of human. I mean, you need not be technically sound. You need not understand terms, but you will understand the issue. You will understand that how and what needs to be done. And the last thing is the actions which have already been started. I mean, even the small understanding of the exhibition with that, that sculpture, with that fish, is, uh, I mean, it's so heart touching. It is very clear message of what, I mean, there are lives, there, there is a cycle, you know, architecture, you need, you need construction material, you need factories for that, the factories release those chemicals. You know, it's a cyclic uh, thing whereby the whole problem is starting. And you have shown us some measures where you can, those small, uh, they can grow bigger, they can expand, they can multiply in various regions and, uh, can be taken forward. Uh, recently, we gave one uh, understanding on water and heritage to schools because schools have in, in schools have invited uh, us that if they, we can give some understanding on how water and heritage, and this can be taken to various schools. This exhibition, this understanding, this video can be taken to various schools through ecomos, and a dialogue can be generated through them. Uh, but two major takeaways, as I said, that understanding that anything can happen and you, you need to realize and you need to understand that there is a problem and an issue and an issue, but then you need to also find small continuous solutions which can lead to a larger understanding of things. So thank you. Thanks for that. I think, uh, yeah, the point of communication 
we conservation professionals really can take a lot away from how to communicate the issues to everyone. That's a very, very good valid point. Next, I invite Shahzad Ahmed Malik, who's joining us from Nenital, perhaps. He's a researcher and architect and academician and hails from Uttarakhand State of North India. He's trained urban regeneration professional with master's degree in urban regeneration from Department of Architecture and Logistics, Jamia Mila, Milia Ismailia, New Delhi. Um, Shahzad, are you there, please? Over to Hi, you. Uh, yeah. Good morning uh, to all the corals here. And after looking, after watching the movie, uh, if I am not going to uh, feel those, uh, feel uh, life and death about those corals, there is no point of uh, talking about that. So I am addressing all the people as corals. I, for being one of the young coral and supported and uh, protected by the old yet healthy corals. I thank Umamani ji for following her heart and putting her soul and energy into coral awareness and protection. And uh, as a young generation, I'll always be indebted for whatever uh, she's doing. After watching the movie, those 52 minutes uh, was a rollback of events and processes that I can relate very closely uh, with what is happening in my region. Uh, I am up north, whatever, 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 whatever we are discussing is in the south of the India. But increasing temperature, uh, risk and a hazard for both the uh, mountains and the corals, pollution, unregulated and unmanaged and a health hazard for all peoples, be it mountain or coastal cities, unsustainable development, particularly industrial development is a common cause of suffering for all the people. Diseases to humans and corals are sufferings and pains. The impact and repercussions are common uh, to all the people, be it north or south, east or west. Based on uh, what I have seen in the movie, what I was uh, hoping to gain from it, uh, I have uh, pinpoint certain areas uh, which can be looked in a different manner and in the light of what uh, we are hoping to gain. So religious practices is one of the area uh, where I can see Rameshwaram adjoining uh, Haridwar or Ajmer in close call collaboration with Madurai is a common link that has to be the solution and should sensitize the people or rather force them to be climate responsive. Climate is the new mantra that should be chanted from these religious institutions. Interlinking the wise wisdom of the culture with increasing risk from pollution as well as unsustainable human practices. And it is also it can be a motivation for the governments to be more rigid as well as more accountable to safeguard our nature and the livelihoods. When I learned from the movie that corals were was, uh, being used as a construction material in the older times and there are evidences in the movie, I can, uh, being from a part of ICOMOS as an architect, what we can do is start documenting those structures, which are just a wall or a ruined structure and make them into lighthouse projects as beacons of coral protection movements. Involvement of architecture schools, heritage organizations can become flag bearers for such projects. And uh, what has been done as an art conservatory project in Goa can be locally doable, uh, driven by the community of our efforts at the very coast where the actual action is, uh, is happening or is being demanded. The next point is shared pain and shared responsibility. Me from the, the mountain region, Uma Mani ji from the coastal region, uh, Poonam ji from the Gujarat, Poonam from Goa, uh, every, we all 
have to see uh, the pain and the sufferings in a common light and should be made accountable of whatever happening in the north and or whatever happening in the south so uh, based on the dream of uma mani ji i can relate the dream uh, for the people of mountain for the people of uttarakhand as well mountain coastal collaborations like twin sister programs should be the driver the idea is not just to aware the people of those coastal areas but also when you look at climate change perspectives cascading effects and impacts so it is important for the people of mountain to see and to relate to whatever is happening in the coastal area and vice versa the pains of fishermen the the dying corals or the practices uh, or development practices like industrial development at tutigore or sitkul a thermal power projects on the coastal areas or hydel power projects in the mountains they are all the same they what they give to us is the common sufferings and we have to come on board at a common platform it might be geography we might be geographically apart but to our sufferings and pains we are one thanks a lot sir thank you um need to move to yes um dr basu you are next speaker dr basu who is an architect and urban planner with phd from iit kharagpur she is charles wallace fellow building conservationist danita fellow and ugc research fellow dr basu is a retired professor from department of architecture and regional planning iit kharagpur and has over 35 years of experience in teaching and research and has worked extensively on documentation and participatory planning in the field of built in cultural heritage and eastern india over to you professor basu thank you panam uh, it's very inspiring to see uh, not only what has been done but its continuation of the process and so many interesting observations are coming out uh, i would just like to add that instead of all the policy and the mechanism against the climate thing violations which are causing irreparable damage to the environment um also hastening the negative impact uh, of the climate changes everywhere so what probably we need in addition is a uh, also resist uh, protest by the people a protest uh, which is not manipulated but that comes from within and based on a complete understanding and awareness of the issues dangers and the impacts this of course need guidance and initiatives of the people like uh madam uma mani who themselves are passionately involved and dedicated to the cause and committed and also unupama how they have captured uh through the film so this film has been able to capture this through narrative in a very unbiased way that is very uh, very interesting to me which tells the story of a single individual the coral woman who started the journey all alone and has been able to reach the people that's most important um it also shows uh, the immense possibility of the diversified ways to reach people and address people from different groups and ages uh through the paintings that is fascinating how the paintings are taking shape strong images that are expression of the first hand knowledge the beautiful images that captured the happy coexistence of the fish and the coral very very symbolic of the whole climate issue and also as already been pointed out the children the kids uh, who are our future to make them aware in their own ways and to get them actively participate like they question as uh, and how they do the paintings and how they uh, uh, so these things shape their in mind uh it also finally ends with a very positive note uh with the help of the scientist that how to make the new colonies of coral by transplantation with involvement of the scientist i think these are my few points to add in addition to what has been said uh, but it's a fascinating learning uh, lessons thank you thank you professor basu i would like to invite now next dr sanjeev kumar Borkakotia, Borkakotia, who has authored about sixty books on education, culture, development issues, literature, literary criticism, and philosophy. 
He is an expert member of International Committee on Intangible Cultural Heritage. At the outset, I congratulate the entire team associated with the Fit Coral Women. It has created awareness about uh, not only coral, but also climate issues like a, a global warming. Uh, from the film, one uh, takeaway is that uh, we can call coral as a barometer of climate change because it seems that 29 degrees centigrade is a, a threshold temperature for the ocean water because after 29 degrees centigrade is crossed, the coral started starts uh, bleaching. It it loses its cut. Uh, color because the uh, plants associated with the coral, which is actually an animal, uh, is uh, expelled by that animal part because of the toxicity. The toxicity in increases after 29 degrees centigrade. And another uh, very crucial issue associated with uh, coral is that uh, uh, the, the building block of uh, coral, uh, that is the, the skeleton, is made of argonite, which is a form of calcium carbonate that is lime. So it can be called as organic lime. Uh, that is why uh, it was used massively as construction material in earlier times, which led to uh, mining of coral in a, a massive way. Uh, almost 25,000 metric ton uh, is mined per year from Mandar Gulf and Park Bay. And as much as 60% coral have been destroyed. So this is a very dangerous issue because coral, uh, since it has a hard uh, structure in the, in the building blocks, it can, uh, it can resist the strong wave of ocean. Uh, even the the tsunami can be uh, can be resisted. Uh, a part of uh, southern uh, India uh, escaped from the tsunami because of existence of of coral, and and I think uh, the submersion of some places, some islands, uh, has become. Uh, has become a reality because of loss of coral. If uh, coral were, was there as earlier, the uh, flood in Chennai would not have taken place. So uh, these things are very crucial. And also there comes some uh, development uh, issues because uh, with coral, the livelihood of the fishing community is involved, the tourism is involved. When we quantify the uh, economic size of all this, it comes to a very huge amount. Uh, according to UNESCO, uh, in the Mesoamerica Reef and the Caudal uh, Triangle, it comes to 35 billion and 30, 37 billion. In Indian currency, if we convert it, it comes to about 2.7 lakh crore. So it's a very huge uh, uh, size of the economy. So if the coral, uh, coral economy is improved, the entire, entire uh, domestic economy will improve. So it's not only the environment, it's also the national economy that is associated with it. So we have to do whatever we can do, like a, a, a coral farming, which uh, is, is shown successfully in the film that can be done. Uh, and along with that, the water pollution has to be diminished because we have seen that uh, the coral uh, blocks, they, uh, uh, they lose their lives because of the uh, water pollution. 
the corals draw their uh, their nourishment from the water. And if the water becomes polluted, the corals uh, die. So water pollution has to be prevented. And for that, the urban uh, sewage has to be uh, treated before uh, being uh, um, let loose in the ocean. And along with that, the industries established in the coastal area has to be uh, uh, taken away to some other places away from the coastal side. And lastly, afforestation a in the coastal area is very important. Uh, all this um, should be taken up as a comprehensive plan. Only then the coral will survive. And along with that, people will survive. Thank you. Thanks very much. And we come to, sh lastly, Shalini. Over to you. What are your thoughts? So that's what, because a lot of, uh, most of the thoughts have been kind of uh, expressed by most of um, the panelists that we have. I'll quickly, uh, you know, very quickly summarize what everybody has uh, kind of put together so that we can then kind of think of how ICOMAS can engage with this uh, as our future activities. So Rohit brought across, uh, brought across this very important uh, point of the nature-based solution and the relationship, uh, you know, ecosystem-based management. So I think that's something that we uh, probably need to keep in mind. Ananya brought across the very vital role of art that art plays, um, uh, you know, and in, in the climate change solution. So, uh, you know, that's a very, very important linkage between uh, natural heritage and cultural heritage that we need to keep in mind. Surya, of course, told us that, uh, you know, we should not be limited, limiting our work to Goa and we should look at all the other coastal areas also. So that's a, a you know, point I want to keep in mind. Amrita, of course, brought in a lot of uh, interesting uh, industrial heritage um, uh, issues. And uh, what um, I think I would then ask the industrial heritage NSC to actually do uh, what she mentioned, to do a critical appraisal of the industrial practices, because that is something which will then maybe help us and, you know, form solutions or, you know, get into the next level of doing things. Poonam again talked about, you know, there is such a large coastline in Gujarat. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, she emphasized and that we all have taken that inspiration from Umaji, that age does not matter to do things. So I think it's time that we all also just rise and do the right thing for the cause. Um, Shehjad brought an important point of letting the people of mountains relate to, uh, you know, what is happening in the coastal area, so, and vice versa. So that's an important relationship. So again, you know, making people aware is something that is, and uh, Sangmitra ji again talked about the diverse ways of reaching people. So I think that's that's an important point that we noted from her. Sanjeev brought across this very important issue of uh, water pollution, which, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, that is something that we all need to keep in mind. And uh, I would say that identifying all these important factors and issues and uh, the movie has been such an eye opener for all of us and uh, from on behalf of ICOMAS India and the Climate Heritage Working Group, I think we should uh, we should be able to collaborate in a much bigger way with Coral Impact, uh, Coral Women Impact Project and try to uh, take the message as far and wide as possible on various, you know, um, um, you know, agencies and government agencies and wherever each one of us has an, has uh, ways and means to uh, reach this out to because it's, it's, it's a cause that we all feel for and, uh, you know, it's a movie which has been made, you know, from the heart and it talks of the right things and it needs to reach the masses. So I think one of the most important things which ICOMAS India can do and help 
is to carry this tale or the movie or the issues that have been highlighted here to as many people as possible. So I think we should try and do that. You know, we have the World Environment Day coming, we have the World Earth Day coming. We can, we can find ways of means with engaging with all different kinds of people uh, and carry this whole uh, you know, very important message to you know, lots of people. Thank you. Thanks very much. Shalini, um, now I'd like to, um, there are a few questions. Um, if we can go in the, Anupama, you're here. So the material, um, there is a question, what's the material of underwater sculpture and why? Uh, this is from Madhu Watre to Anupama. So um, basically we've been in consultation with SDMRI. Uh, which is the Marine Research Institute in Tamil Nadu. And they have been sort of instrumental in handholding us through what kind of material to be used for the sculpture. Or uh, like the, the area around one island, they are also using cement because what you need is a very firm base that doesn't get eroded over time and is able to sort of help the corals to sort of attach themselves and grow. So cement, we've tested various materials and eventually they've decided on cement and taking their uh, sort of success metrics with cement, we decided that we would also do the same. So that was the reason why we decided to go with cement. And do we know the, uh, the success uh, span of time uh, over what length so of time? So this is something, see, this is an to? infinite uh, period of time, right? But uh, we will be sort of, documenting it for at least two to three years, by ah. which time the corals will grow substantially. Then yeah. after that, you know, yeah. they'll Got take it. over. Yes. So, but so the next there. question is uh, for you, uh, it's to both actually, more to Umaji as well. Did you find any intangible heritage in terms of songs, folklore, um, connected with health of, uh, you know, the corals or the relationship of people to corals and this is a very specific uh, question. Umaji, did you come across? It's just something. So I would ask Uma only to speak about it because I was not there during the shooting of the film. Yeah. Uh, however, I must say that it's a, it's a great point because if I'm sure there is folklore and there mm. are songs mm. and that is something again that we can, like we are talking about a 360 degree impact it is something that we will now start like exploring and digging out and maybe sort of integrating it into the entire project. But right. Uma, uh, if you remember anything in terms of folklore or songs that came up about corals, then you can share that. Um, so the question is, have you heard of any traditional songs or something that is connected with uh, fisheries or, uh, or specifically to corals or any Anything that you may have come across or you have, it's not something, yeah. it's just a question. It's okay. There are no right and wrong <laughs> answers. It's just a query or maybe but, it's a task for ICH to find out more about uh, definitely the movie makes us think about it more. Mm -hmm. So now there is another question. Uh, what about the coral nursery idea by Umaji? Where does she plan to do it? Uh, what's it's all about? Asked by a 16 year old school student Kirtana from Hyderabad. How could the child help you? This is again coming from Madhu Wotre. Yeah, is it for me? Uh, yes. Uh, Anupama and Priya are taking it forward. So the burden is with them now. So wherever they do, they go, just go dive and see and be happy. Uh, that is, that is uh, within my, I would say, uh, capability. So if they are the ones who are doing it. So now they were so particular that I wanted to be there for the installation and I was there and I just enjoyed and was so thrilled and uh, grateful for that time. So that is the girl, she can join the Coral uh, Woman Impact team. Perhaps, yes, Anupama? Yeah. Everyone is welcome to join. <laughs> yeah. yeah she'll be part of it and it's nice to see the future because it is in their hands now the world is uh, belongs to them now so 
Korman Impact team uh, will uh, be so happy to have them. Thank you for that. So now, uh, are there any, we have a few minutes with us. So I would invite anybody in the audience who would like to react or, or uh, something that has been missed out, or I do have a question for uh, Ananya <laughs> or anybody who is in, uh, but before I get to ask, let me, yeah. Madhu, would you like to please? Uh, uh, Namaste, Omaji, and uh, thank you very much for a wonderful program. And my sincere apologies for you know not being actively involved in this. But uh, yeah, uh, one thing I would like to suggest, I put it in the chat box also. The hotel management student should be you know taken into this and tourism management because uh, I remember you mentioned that the hotels in Rameshwaram are putting their sewage directly into the lake, sorry, into the in, into the ocean. So, um, I mean, all over India, this should be taken up as a cause, uh, I, I would say as a concern amongst the student, because uh, naturally, you know, within five years, they're all professionals and they'll be the decision maker in the field. So would you suggest that something ICOMOS can do, take this movie to the um, various, so yeah. something that one of the training um, NSCs we have about, yes. maybe yes. perhaps they can take the movie and, and reach yeah. out to, because... Yeah. This is more about us joining the movement and what can we do? So it's yes, a very good idea. Yes, Perhaps yeah. that's an avenue that um, one of the NSEs can take the film and reach yeah. out to people. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, we, I have been circulating it amongst a lot of teachers since yes. I got to know about it. And we yeah, didn't get and a maybe uh, also through ECOMOS, um, I, India's initiative could be, as, as Shalini also said, that let's involve more people because more people will be required. So. I think we have got more uh, raised hands. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can't make out who. Umaji, did you raise hand? Yes, yes. yes. Please, please. Yeah. Yeah. The first hand, I have died in sewage. The first hand, I am the one who is uh, affected by it and I fell ill for a week. So, this is a very good thing the hotel industry should be you know, sensitized about. Yeah. So I have first-hand uh, experience of diving in sewage. And how was the experience in Goa? Was the water as uh, polluted as, as in Tutikorin? Or no, it no. was it, better? No, it Grand was Island better. is a little, yeah, it's been looked after no. Indian Navy. but uh, yeah. <laughs> So maybe, but you know, I'm just curious because yes, we do have a lot of issues of uh, industrial pollution because of the coal and because of oil spill. And we have seen it over the last 10 years. So, but yeah, so it was okay. No, um, that area actually has, uh, it has a healthy coral reef oh, over okay. there. And so right. whatever else is being done to facilitate that growth, is helping because it's less polluted, definitely, that right. area. Yeah. So maybe that becomes a benchmark of comparison for other uh, examples in that yeah. sense. Uh, yes, uh, Surya Narayan first, Surya, and then I'll yeah. come back to you, Shalin. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is uh, just uh, extending what uh, Madhu has uh, uh, talked about. Uh, and as I also mentioned in my uh, initial discussion, that it should be, the movie should be, um, I think it should be played uh, along all the coastal uh, uh, locations as a special uh, uh, initiative by the governments along the coastline uh, uh, across India, uh, because it's a very beautiful initiative and uh, it should reach uh, all the managers, uh, local managers, local uh, uh, um, like museums, uh, of these locations, uh, from uh, starting from uh, uh, Kolkata, Bay of Bengal, uh, and from there to uh, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Kerala uh, to Gujarat. Uh, so I think it can move, uh, and this should be played, and also should be played this uh, in uh, Lakshadweep and Andamans, uh, uh, where uh, uh, this uh, the resource is uh, very. Um, beautifully captured in this location and this should be uh, played. That is, uh, the message can be taken forward in especially where visitors are uh, uh, um, going uh, um, to these places. Yeah, that's all. So you are the West, our uh, South Zone representative. We can count on you to, to take this forward with the e-commerce and also with all the universities and you have led so successfully that 
UNESCO listing. So yes, uh, fantastic idea. Thanks very much. And sure. we are counting on you. Um, next, uh, Shalini, yes. Uh, can I come to you last? Uh, there is one more hand, which is of yes, sure. Mr. Tahir. Please. Yeah, hello. Hi. Uh, it was a very interesting um, discussion, deliberation, and also the documentary which I saw. Uh, basically, being an archaeologist and a conservator who has worked in Goa, many times when we are working in our own discipline, we really do not understand the other discipline. So when I saw this coastline, the corals, immediately my mind went back to the lower Aguada. There we have got a bastion which jets into the sea. So what we intended to do was to save our bastion from the uh, uh, threats of the sea. We wanted to put tetrapods all around the uh, lower bastion. So what happened then later when I was making a presentation in NIO, a young student got up and said, sir, you are trying to save your monument. But if you do that, the coastline will be damaged. So now I realize that we should go beyond our discipline and try to understand other discipline to understand the holistic uh, nature of climate and its effect on the monuments. This is my uh, spin-off from what I'm hearing. Thank you, Poonam, for Yeah, sure. Uh, no, makes all the sense. And there is that spin-off. I was hoping to have those kinds of reactions, but I think everybody is so blown by the film and the content and, and I mean, I have had a little more time to, to digest it and, and have having met you, but I think a lot of reflections will come. Uh, Professor Basu first, please. I would uh, see this film more also as a model which can be taken up for similar other things uh, like e-commerce can take it up, uh, let's say the east zone and the other zone where coral is one problem, mangrove is the other problem. So if this can be uh, taken up uh, in other areas uh, in addition to showing the film and building up such activities. And also taking up on a suggestion about the folklore and uh, if some uh, sort of a concerted thing can be taken up to go more into uh, depth. I, I mean by the e-commerce that someone takes up that to see the that connection between the folklores and other. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Anupama, we are giving you all the scripts, huh, ideas, which new movies you have to make so that we can go <laughs> because uh, our communication skills, we can tend to get very uh, technically oriented and we have to be correct about it, but not able to reach out to the, not all of us are able to reach out to the kids. And of course we need these synergies. Maybe we can bounce ideas and how we can really participate in this process as well of content creation or maybe learn from you. Kalpana Ramesh, may I invite you please? Next. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi. It's been it's been wonderful listening to all of you, and I work towards water conservation and revival of heritage steppes in the city of Hyderabad. I come from an architecture background, but I don't practice architecture. Oh, congratulations! Uh, so, I saw your post. That well is just absolutely impressive. The layers and layers of things. You're sorry. Yeah, continue, please. You thank have to you see so your much. work. Yeah. So, I've just learned today that what a film can do. Right? You struggle exactly. so much on exactly. to connect communities to government. So I sort of connect the dots, the funding, the government and communities and make something happen very profound. And I sort of build this engagement by making these re replicable restorations, which can happen in anywhere, any, anywhere in the city or the state where people can take these examples and make it happen. But a film can do much, much more is what I learned today. And Umaji, I'm just absolutely, I mean, stand with that. And, and the way Anupama and you guys have filmed it, very true to the uh, concept, true to the subject, and, and so real, right? It was for me like going back to childhood and watching a movie, right? It is, it's not an adult watching a movie. It's like, you know, this can any, uh, I felt like a child watch, watching this movie. It's an amazing connect. And I think kudos to the team who's done this film. So. I'm so inspired to maybe make these kind of films for water conservation. And yeah. I would like to tell you in the step well that you've uh, seen, Puna, we found these cone uh, shells, uh, you know, more like a fossil kind of a thing on, on, on the rocks at the base of right. the step well. I'm still to, you know, get researchers yeah. to work on that and understand. And I think a, a film can do a lot and, I, and, and great work, Anupama, let's see. Yeah, bringing that point is very interesting because also we forget that shell was used for shell lime, creation of shell lime in itself. And so 
the fact that it was built with lime i think we need to also research a little more about what role did the corals really play in creation of these uh, buildings which are now uh, getting demolished now so technically we will need to see it is a shocker no nobody imagines that <laughs> coral could be a building block but perhaps they are yes. unburnt or maybe they were uh, it's in the pro production i think there is a, a whole room for research that has opened up for these two things to connect as well and at um, the base of the well which was covered for 42 plus years in garbage correct no, no, and no, these we, things are right yeah. yeah. that and so that's an amazing thing to understand yeah yeah Poonam uh, Thrambadiya, Shalini, you will have to wait. No, I, I just in continuation to what Surya and Madhu have said, we can show this, we can reach out to the schools and we can show this film and then create a small series of workshops, student workshops, how they are interpreting this. And Absolutely. So that is why we have East Zone representative, we have a West Zone and a South Zone because that's why you are here today as panelists as well. And I hope we'll push it, pull it all together to reach out to the schools, to the colleges, to the um, um, housewives. I think housewives are very important. Everybody has forgotten about it. They are the power. Children, yes, but it is also um, the, the waste. You know, one of the issues of the waste, if I may say so, no, because I can't say so. Shalini, please go ahead. That's not my please job as yet to them. speak. Okay, the waste segregation and waste management at source is the most important aspect. Why we are not able to get there in last 20 years is beyond me. So please don't forget it is women. One of the very good points that uh, are, um, which I'll come back to in a, way, in a minute is um, ICH, Ananya, I think all of us also need to look at role of um, religion. And it is not about religion as a religion, but the practices. So perhaps we need to look at not changing what people believe in, but maybe an intervention. Could we have some sort of fabric, some sort of uh, research agenda where those fabric which is left in Rameshwaram in the water becomes food for fishes and corals. For example, this is, this is something, I'm not saying we'll find a solution, but if we attempt at it, perhaps we can find the agencies. And this is where industrial also comes in. Um, it's, it, I'm really glad that we are looking at, uh, you know, um, taking it seriously. What is, what is the role of industry in terms of and not looking in isolation? We really have to stop being in silos and get together more often. And, and this has given us an opportunity to look at this, that indeed it all really comes together. Shalini, over to you. Otherwise, I'll continue. Okay. I, I just want to, uh, you know, before I ask my question to Anupma, I just want to add to what, uh, you know, um, Kalpana Ramesh was uh, mentioning that the film actually is, uh, you know, uh, otherwise normally the, the misnomer is the documentaries are so boring. But this documentary, it's called a documentary. That's what the YouTube says, but it's so beautifully made that it just, you know, it just, uh, you know, I've seen it multiple times. I saw it multiple times. You know? So it did not, it, it just carried through so beautifully that I have to compliment you know, Priya is not there, but uh, Umaji, you of course are an inspiration. My question, Anupama, this movie that we have, we have a YouTube channel for iCommerce. Is it possible for us to upload the movie on the YouTube channel, iCommerce YouTube channel, or do we every time have to, we just have to, or we just paste the link over there? And I was told that we need some raw files if we have to upload it or something. So the thing is that uh, this film was funded by PSBT. PSBT uh, shut down. The rights belong with PSBT. Uh, we are not allowed to monetize the film. So which is why it's available free. Uh, ideally, we would like it to be on our website. Um, and you're free to use it from there. So we can give a link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. we can give a little shot with this yeah. uh, file, today's yeah. program, and some yeah. bits of it, yeah. and then give a link to www.coralwoman.com. Yeah. 
yeah. which, where actually the film is available. Yes. So that's where I, um, yes. so that should work fine. That's good. Yeah. So and now, in fact, uh, if I may just add one more thing, is that if you could urge others to maybe just buy a painting or two from the website, yes. it'll help our project, you know, because we are really, uh, we need to raise funds before we can do the second half of the project in Goa. Right. Uh, which is the lab so sculpture. Maybe we'll ask a special, uh, when we'll talk about it. So I'm coming to you, uh, Anupama ji. What yeah. is your... Um, it's now the wrapping up session. I'm really missing uh, Priya. I hope she gets well really, really soon and we get to chat more. But uh, as proxy to both Umaji and uh, Priya, um, your reaction to our um, interaction today? Uh, any insights or um, you would like to react to? Uh, I think I see a lot of potential in the conversations that have happened today. Uh, and I know that we've already triggered some ideas and thoughts, which it will be great if like a lot of you have said that we want to carry this to the different coastlines across India, because that is exactly our vision as well, where either, so one is the screening of the film across the various coastlines to the communities that exist there, that live there. So that just builds a lot of awareness. Uh, taking this, the film to various schools, so it's an outreach to the, to the youth, uh, three is just the art residency model, if it can travel to uh, across the coastline, yeah. where maybe, you know, we have other artists also collaborating and creating specific designs that are relevant to the culture of that, that uh, particular uh, area. So it just becomes different things, but it's covered by this entire umbrella uh, of the Coral Woman Impact Project, where we create all these different uh, designs and we sort of promote coral rehabilitation right. uh, along the coastline. And maybe even a traveling art festival where all of these components come together. So the ideas are all there and it's great. I mean, a big, and it's really nice of you to have included and so thoughtfully brought in, you know, the Northeast, Southwest zones so that everybody can sort of uh, look at it from their perspective and lens and um, make this into a larger movement because that's really what it is. It is a move me, movie to a movement. And uh, the more people we can partner with, just, you know, the more relevant this message becomes. So thank you very much. Thanks. I already see Ananya making notes like now and I see a potential stuff coming up across because yes, she, her work, you have to see banglanatak.com. It's so impressive. It, because it's built from the grassroots. I Thanks. think we within ourselves, we can learn. I do, before we leave, I mean, we have another seven minutes. Um, um, do we still have our uh, industrial... Amrita? Amrita, are you here? Amrita Bilal? Is there? Sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. the mute button was on. Yeah. yeah. Um, very nicely, uh, you have uh, put in some sort of uh, direction that action could be shaped. I can't see you. Because in a way, this uh, um, very scary part we haven't touched at all in our discussion is human health. And oh. to me, the shocker was of the cancers. And also the the kind of waste and tuticorin or whichever area. So we have people who are living in that area. Do you think we can't actually keep human health aside and think only about culture or practices or give it a name of heritage? What do you think? Is there a way we can address this part? Um, I. I think there needs to be from the industrial heritage perspective uh, um, more sort of indigenous conversations on how to frame industrial heritage because the origins are Eurocentric and uh, across to Americas. And so in that sense, there is a lot of um, legacy of uh, colonialism, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, climate change that one is dealing with and uh, labor and community issues that come into uh, industrialization. Uh, having said that, that, that's also not divorced from aspirations. I mean, we are able to do the Zoom call because of, I mean, we use Absolutely. other yeah. places. 
Um, but I think that that's a framing where it's it's a sort of binary that uh, is a destructive binary sort of flies in the face of uh, say industrial practices uh, and livelihood practices which were embedded in community and had a sort of very different approach of sustaining the ecosystem that feeds us yeah and it was very fascinating to see that you know people are saying when I was when I'm 60 now but when I was 25 I used to do this when I was a child the coral reefs were five to ten feet high and uh, there is, and that is part of a cultural imagination that should be more mainstream. I mean, that shouldn't be news. Um, so I think we, there is definitely, and this is a larger discussion that one has to do uh, um, in terms of what is our sort of cultural imagination as an industrious society? What were the practices, et cetera? Um, and I think- Thanks. Yeah. 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 That's that's what I, I was yeah. wondering if that's what you meant, because within yeah. NSC, we need to really perhaps look at. And also, I was wondering if you would be willing to share this movie with CII, because there is, you know, the, 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 the whole aspect of um, smaller actions, different actions, whether it's it's, you know, the, the garbage or the sewage or the mm. Mm. because mm. there are small little little ones which mm. has ended up in, in yeah. 16 17 percent loss of coral reefs no yes so yes. i think this anthropogenic the more people we can and using the organization nsc uh, industrial ecommerce india could perhaps approach cii and and show showcase these yeah. ones because yeah. they also have their uh, organizations right across so yeah, that yeah, maybe something yeah. I was wondering yeah. if if just a prompt there to also no that that's that, a you useful know? idea because what what has come out of uh, what uh, Ma Anupaman uh, they've they've done together is that also the need for strategic uh, collaborations you know like strategic partnerships uh, because all of this energy eventually has to get channelized into yeah. uh, uh, some sort of like action and especially with climate change however much we are in and I think that's almost like for our own sanity denial of it it's it's very very urgent mm -hmm. so so yeah I think strategic partnerships especially with stakeholders who are who can even like I think a five percent change in how they operate can actually have a huge impact is is it's like Put rather than yeah, yeah rather I'll than status quo somewhere yeah. if we can start and for me i think personally when i saw it it was like uh, reaching a point where you know nothing what can individual do and then i i see this movie and i'm like umaji alone and then these two women who join her and create yeah. this and in a short period so it's like no you know you're from yeah. your own inertia of uh, knowing things and wanting to do because i think the responsibility lies more with the people who are aware that is very true but where, which direction so in a certain way we are um, if i may say so for the entire um, organization it is that we are very very grateful for inspiring us in this terms and that's uh, yeah. i uh, hand over to nijari now Thank you, everyone. That was a wonderful interaction that we all just shared. I would like to invite uh, Shalini Das Gupta, ma'am, to please deliver the vote of thanks and close the event. Thank you very much. And behind scenes is also Bindu. We, I, I thank her for all her help with uh, messages and chat box and everything. Shalini, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nijari and Nijari. Like you said, let me start by thanking all the people behind the scenes. So, Bindu, Nijari, um, Shejat, Poonam, you know, this, this event. And, and actually, you know, a big thank you to Poonam because she's the one who brought this to our notice. And she said that, you know, this is a movie that we need to, you know, all of us need to look at. And, and of course, uh, you know, uh, a bigger thank you to uh, Umaji and Anupama uh, for uh, you know being able to find time to be with us today, um, and you know uh, as an eye opener, as as a, you know, so it's bringing us all together to discuss such an important uh, you know issues which we uh, you know like like 
um, uh, somebody said that uh, film is such a you know strong medium you know because as 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 architects as professionals we are only you know creating reports and we are just making these you know we are working for various agencies and organization just but they all just keep lying here and there as reports and projects and you know and uh, so this uh, the film as a medium is really a strong medium which can which needs to reach to the masses which you've done and you know uh, let's do a group photo much. as well yeah yeah, Continue, you. Charlie. I'm just saying, please requesting everyone to switch on their uh, cameras so that we can take a picture. Um, Thanks to all the people who found time, all our members and non-members who found time to come and attend our uh, you know, small event. But yeah, it's big for us because we are trying to celebrate the World Heritage Day today. Is, and tomorrow and the eve, the so natural oh, yeah, heritage. We are on the eve of the yeah. World Heritage Day. Uh, no, thank you so very much, Umaji, again, and uh, Anupama, and uh, we will be in touch. And likewise, everyone, please feel uh, free to be in touch with uh, Anupama, if I may say so. Yes, Anupama. Yes, yeah? of course. Yeah, absolutely. And and let's uh, and and with us, and let's figure out how do we move forward with our inspired energies. Thank you, Shalini, for we can talk a lot, but uh, you know, listening to one of the few things is, is something that we have really learned here right on thank time you so much <laughs> it's been so wonderful thank you thank, thank you. you very much thank you thank you thank, thank you, you so much bye 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 thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.